I finally decided who I'm going to captain and what transfers I'm going to make. Welcome to the Gianni Baticci YouTube show. Hope you guys are well and you're looking forward to game week five. We've had some big questions this week and I hope I've got the answers for you. Do not go anywhere and do hit that like and subscribe button nice and early. Thank you guys as always for your support. Look, let's start with my bus team. You can see this is the week I presented earlier in the week. We're not going to go through it just now. We're going to come back to it. But look, we're going to talk captaincy. We don't usually start with captaincy in these videos, but it's such a big discussion this week. I really want to address it early doors. So earlier in the week, I did a poll before the Champions League games of Haaland, Salah or other. This was really interesting. I didn't quite expect Salah to be the overwhelming favourite. So around 70% of you voted for Mo Salah versus Bournemouth, despite his blank, of course, in game week four. Uh, Haaland at 19 and other at 11.9. But if we go back to my team, my big decisions were Watkins, Haaland or Salah. Now, Ollie Watkins is a player I was really tempted to captain. But, and there is a big but here, what Champions League brought us was... A 60-minute appearance for Ollie Watkins. Now, we saw him come off uh, with ice on his right ankle. We can see him here on the bench. I tweeted straight, straight away, please don't do this to me, Ollie. Not another, not another, not another week with 10 men, surely. But it looks like since that, he's come out of that press conference at post-match Unai Emery. Or he said to a reporter post-match, I saw this on Scout, he's working well, he's played well, and I decided to change him like another player. He's okay. It was always the plan, I think, for him to get 60 minutes. So I'm sure Ollie Watkins is going to be fine. But seeing that, knowing he's had knee issues, knowing he had ankle on his eyes, uh, ice on his ankle, <laughs> ankle on his eyes, I think that's enough to put me off Ollie Watkins for captaincy. He'll be in my team. I think he's going to start. I'm confident about that. But captaincy is just not a direction I'm now going to move into with Ollie Watkins. So it leaves you with Haaland and Salah. What did midweek bring? Well, like Watkins, Salah played on Tuesday, uh, but he also plays on Saturday. Haaland Wednesday, but plays on Sunday in the Premier League. If we address Haaland first, he was marked by uh, a Serbi of Inter who really handled him well. It was a nil-nil draw. First time Haaland's been locked out this season. Second time he's played a Serbia, by the way. Both times into Milan, clean sheet. Um, and that's what Arsenal can do to him. Saliba and Gabriel are better than the Serbi. They're the best defence, arguably in the Premier League, arguably in Europe, uh, Arsenal, alongside Inter, I should add. Um, and I just feel like it's going to be a very low-scoring affair. Sure, Haaland's reliable and the best player in the game. But this is the worst fixture he could possibly have, other than a trip to the Emirates. Um, I don't, I don't think. Look, if Haaland scores a goal, we're gonna it, we're gonna expect that. If Haaland scores a brace or a hat trick, we're probably gonna be semi surprised. Mo Salah, on the other hand, if he gets a hat trick or a brace, we're not surprised at all. Now, what did Liverpool bring in midweek? Well, Liverpool bought energy. Uh, they bought a slick passing performance. They bought. A lot of shots away from home, Tuesday night in Milan. Milan have been poor, fine. But Mo Salah hit the bar twice. Um, Gakpo played really well on the left. Dominic Sabotsai in the middle had an amazing game. Gakpo and Sabotsai, their two best games of the season. They're functioning well. I think Liverpool was just a blip against Forest. And Bournemouth, what will they do? They will come to play. Bournemouth will come to play and they'll leave spaces for the likes of Mo Salah. I like this fixture. And when we see Rob T's graphic, Rob T is someone I use often when I'm not sure on decisions. You can follow him on Twitter. He has goal projections based on bookies odds, but also clean sheet data. And he reckons Man City will score 1.75 goals by the spread markets. Um, Liverpool, he thinks, will score more than any other team this weekend. So Villa at 2.1, Spurs at 2.3, well Liverpool at 2.7. Like the bookies really fancy Liverpool for that big ceiling fixture, which is why Mo Salah will be my, I'm sure of it, my captain. I'm pretty locked on that. So look guys, I want to give a shout out to one, because just stop what you're doing for a second. One football, genuine, you've all heard of it. I'm sure you've heard of it, but is it on your phone? If it's not, get it on your phone and you won't regret it. There's a link in the description below. Um, it's free to download. It's brilliant. I use it on a daily basis. First thing I do every morning, I check the One Football app. Brilliant for football news, obviously. But the thing I really like about it is not only can I see data and fixtures and press conference quotes and all that, great for FPL. I can watch video clips. Like straight away, if I want to see the goals from last night in the EFL Cup, which is what I was doing on Wednesday night, straight away there's a clip there. Two, three minute highlights package, bang. Easy on your phone. 
get it on. You're going to love one football and use the link in the description. Uh, let's have a look, shall we, at my team. So um, this is where we're at. Uh, I do have a couple of players that you could argue are doubts for the weekend just fitness doubts uh, but let me give you an update on a couple of them so look i've said about watkins i'm not worried about watkins to be fair uh but i do think we should uh just check out the latest on Jao pedro because again i saw this on scout he did this was on thursday he did train uh which is good um and uh he didn't make the efl cup squad in the week so i think that was again precautionary I think there's a very good chance he starts. I'd be surprised if he doesn't. Uh, Brighton put out a B team effectively in the week. Uh, let's see how the next few days will be. So they do play Sunday, which is a big advantage for João Pedro owners. So he's, I guess, the big injury issue in my team. I also have Lewis Hall there at, uh, at, as my third defender, who did start against Wolves and played well. But he now faces a trip to Fulham against Adama Traore. Do you play Lloyd Kelly, the better defensive player against Traore? Probably do. The more physical player, you probably do. So I'm a bit worried about Lewis Hall, and that's potentially an option out. But for podcast listeners, we've got Henderson, Trent, Robinson and Hall. That's my back line. The midfield, I've got the double Liverpool, Salah and Jota, Rodgers and Gordon. And then up front, João Pedro, Haaland and Watkins. Pedro is, of course, the biggest doubt. Dominic Calvert-Lewin is someone that interests me if I am selling, say, a, a João Pedro. And Dominic Calvert-Lewin himself has had... Uh, a bit of an injury scare. He didn't play in the AFL Cup, along with a couple of other Everton players, because of illness, not injury, right? Uh, and DCL is back. Again, this is from Fantasy Football Scout. I saw their update uh, on Twitter. And yeah, Dyche has said back from illness. That's the always worry with Dominic Calvert-Lewin, is, is he injured? But illnesses, they're often fine because you're ill and then you're not a few days later. Uh, an injury with Calvert-Lewin often means you're out for a very long time. Um, so interesting one to monitor there, but I think Dominic Calvert-Lewin, we can go absolutely fine if you are having to make a João Pedro move, for example. So what options do I have with my transfer? Um, this is what I presented earlier in the week. I told you I've got five options straight away. Let's just remove wildcard off the bottom. That's now no longer an option for me. I'm not going to be wildcarding. I will show you later in the show a wildcard draft. And if you are enjoying the show so far, do hit that button like and do hit that button subscribe. And if you want to drop a comment below, I'll be replying to as many as I can today as well. Um, so look, option five's gone. Option one, two, three have now been refined. So I could sell Lewis Hall if we were to hear he wasn't starting. Are we going to get that news? Very unlikely. Um, so I'll probably be gambling with Lewis Hall. But if I was to sell Lewis Hall, it would be a dogey that I'd buy. He went off at 45 minutes. Again, that was pre-planned uh, against Coventry. I'd only have 5 million to spend on a defender. He offers that tiny bit of upside. It's an option. Or I could sell Johnson. I said for Veltman or Konza, it would actually be for Lewis Dunk. And I've got the exact funds for that. So it could be option two, Johnson to Lewis Dunk, who's 4.6. So we'll swap Veltman and Konza out for Dunk. And then option three is João Pedro out for... It wouldn't be Welbeck, it would be for Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I like that Calvert-Lewin fixture. I think Leicester can be vulnerable even at home. What I want to do, though, and what I think I will be doing, is rolling that transfer. Now, options one, two, three. Let me show you my team as to if and when are we going with those. So, Lewis Hall to Adogi would only be if we were to hear Lewis Hall isn't starting, or we didn't see him in training. So I can't see myself making that move. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be gambling that Lewis Hall plays. If he doesn't, I'll probably get 20 minutes off the bench and a point. Not ideal, but it means I get 11 on the pitch. The Johnson move, again, would only be if we had a, an injury at the back and I needed that extra defender. So Lewis Dunk could come in. The Jao Pedro move would only be if we heard Jao Pedro was definitely out. I don't think we're going to hear any of these things, which leaves me with where I think I'm at with my transfer this week, guys. I think I'll be rolling. I think it will be a simple roll the transfer, which means when I wildcard next week, and I am planning on a game week six wildcard, in game week seven, I'll have two free transfers, which is really, really nice. It does mean I have to suffer a little bit this week. So let's wait and see. We could hear that Watkins isn't starting and then I panic and I have to make a transfer and Calvert-Lewin comes in or Jota isn't starting. With players like Jota and Watkins, though, as long as we're in the squad, if I thought they were getting half an hour off the bench, like Jota, if he doesn't start, I'm okay taking half an hour off the bench. I'm probably I'm not going to sell him. Watkins would be a little bit more of a concern because his could be injury related and therefore not in the squad. But I think the only players I really have to worry about are João Pedro, and I think he'll be fine. If you have Isak, I'd be worried. I think if you've got Isak, you're probably going to have to sell him this week. Um, 
So that's where we're at with my team. I want to show you my wildcard draft, but before I do, I want to show you what I've been up to this week. Um, I'm recording in a different space. I'm recording from Seville, um, and I've been uh, at the World Football Summit, and yesterday I met Giorgio Chiellini, who's one of my heroes. Uh, here's me chatting with him, and does any drop a comment, drop a comment if you think you know what we were discussing. Maybe it was the shirt tug against Saka. Maybe we're discussing living in America. Or eating past. I don't know. Drop your comments and I'll let you know the answer in the comments for those uh, that want to play that game. Let's have a look then at my Game Week 5 wildcard team and the reason why I'm anti it. Um, this is a draft I put together midweek. The big thing about a Game Week 5 wildcard is what to do with Mo Salah. Do you go Arsenal early and get Saka in or Havertz in or do you stick with Saka Salah for this week? And my wildcard team was like, mm, I'd go without Salah and I'm not comfortable with that. That's the main reason why I do not like this team this week. In game week six, this team could look really good. In game week five, it just doesn't work for me because I think Salah is the best captaincy option this week. Of course he is. So when we compare that to my actual team, I go, oh, I've got Jota this week. I like that. I've got Gordon this week. I like that. These play I've got Salah this week. These players aren't in my wildcard uh, draft. If you agree with that decision, hit that like button. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please do hit that subscribe uh, button as well. I'll be back on Sunday morning for a live, guys. I've started doing Sunday morning lives. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, nice and early for those on the other side of the world as well. If you haven't already checked out Fantasy Football Scout, make sure you do so. So I'll see you for another video very, very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.